Hi, everybody. We're going to pick up where we left off last week with this week's lesson. If you haven't done the previous week's lesson, please go back and start at, with building um, chords in the triad chords and then learn about the passing tones, which are notes that are not in the chord. These ones are in the chord, so they're chord tones, and how you should handle them. And then last week we built a chord progression where we used the one, four, and five chords, preferably start on a one, end on a one, preferably when you added your melody so that you had your little um, A section song that went with the chords that you chose in your progression in the bass clef. Um, you start on a C and you end on a C as far as the entire song goes. Those are things from last year. So I chose to have two one chords or two Cs, don't forget, um, great big dogs fight animals and all cows eat grass are the letters for bass clef. Some people have forgotten that bass clef has different letters. And we do want to see the chords in the bottom. And you don't have to have this repeat if you don't have a repeat. And also a couple of things that came up in the last lesson was when you add uh, a measure, make sure that you're already clicked on the measure you want to see another measure come after it. If you just lit up any measure and hit plus it's just going to put a measure right after that and some people had a little problem with this layout tool i guess some of the macs were giving people a hard time some people that had to back out because uh it's asking a lot of your system to use this software and the cloud and all that stuff so don't worry if you don't have perfect measures it's really just for convenience that we use that layout tool to get four measures and four measures um, if you have five measures, it's still the same song. It's just nicer to see and hear and read all together. If you can get the plus worked out right and have your nice four measure little story, little song, little melody that goes with the chords that you chose for the first four. And then a completely different little story and melody, but that goes well for your B section to go with your A. And if you don't have repeats, it's okay. You can have just an A, B. Uh, and if you have a whole bunch of problems and you still want to try this, go ahead. But if you are um, behind, you want to go back and see some of the previous lessons. Okay, so now we're ready. Sorry about that. I just want to uh, catch up with a few people here. Um, now we're ready to do this week's work. So this is where we left off. I made a little bit of a change right here because I was doing something I shouldn't have uh, in the previous lesson because we we didn't get to why you could do what I did. So I made a little change there so that we have just the passing tones lit up. And I'll play this for you to remind you what this sounded like. By the way, some of you might remember that last year I said the T, or the seventh note of the scale, is a leading tone. It leads to Do. So you might try that in your song, too. Hit the T before you go back to the Do to end your song. It helps to let the listener know you're ending. Okay, so this week we're going to do something really simple. We're going to add a bass part in. So when you go up to your parts, which we've done quite a few times, and you choose at a bass part, there are a number of choices. In bowed strings, you're gonna get choices like double bass and cello. In woodwind, you could choose uh, low note instruments like um, a, a bass clarinet. In the brass section, you could choose a tuba or a trombone. You want low note instruments. And in this plucked strings section, um, they have electric guitar electric bass please don't use tab tab is an alternative notation system that only a couple of guitar players know everybody else uses the notation system we're using so stick with regular electric bass or um i don't know if there's anything else but oh and rock electric bass let's try that just for the fun of it all right now when you add a bass line in the rule of thumb that we're going to be sticking to there's many ways and there is no right and wrong and whatever your sound look song looks and sounds like it's still right it's the arts so stop being picking on yourself 
if there's things that aren't perfect and just keep playing with these tools until you start to become a little more pro with them and you'll be able to do all kinds of things. I have had some of my best work come out of mistakes. So um, the rule is that the bottom note in a chord that's not inverted, for those of you that know about inverted chords, I could take this, this is C, E, and G. I could take this G and put it down here. It would still be a C chord, but we're just using the DO of the chord is on the bottom. Nice little triads built like this. So the bottom note of my one chord in C major is a C. So when I go down to add my bass, I'm going to use a C. And I'm going to stick with the C. So um, I would like mine to be half notes. And this next chord is a C on the bottom, so I'm going to stay with C. Now this time I'm going to use my keyboard. Don't forget, you can use your keyboard. You don't have to use your mouse. This is F, A, and C for the four chord. So I'm going to put an F in, and I'm going to hit my keyboard again. Let me move my mouse over here so you can see. There we go, and I can have another one. And then um, this has a C on the bottom, so I'm back to a C again. I'm going to hit the key. Okay, let's hear what that opening sounds like now. Okay, now something I'd like to show you is that when you have play lit up, there's this thing over here called the mixer. And when I click on it, I can actually see my parts and I can look at different tracks. And I can, it, you know, this is the piano part from Note Flight, this is the electric bass. Um, I can make it just stop playing by clicking on that so I can hear one thing at a time. And there's the master track. I can change some gain. I can make it have no reverb. I can make it sound like it's in a cathedral. So I just thought I'd show you the mixer tool. I'll probably do a different uh, video on that, but some people might be interested in that. I don't like the fact that I can barely hear my electric bass. So I'm just going to turn my um, parts on here and turn up my electric bass. Just the left speaker and the right speaker, right? So now you can hear that it's a little bit easier to hear my bass. You can do that or not. It's up to you. Uh, I'd like to change it up a little. And this time I would like to, in the bottom section, add a double bass from the a traditional bowed strings family. So I have a choice here between the section. That's when you're going to add harmony upon harmony upon harmony. I'm just going to go with a solo double bass. And it'll add the part. It'll stay whole rests here. And now I'm back to looking at the bottom of my chord. Okay, I have a G on the bottom. So I'm going to add a G as soon as I wake this guy up. <laughs> And I would like it to be a dotted quarter note. So remember up here are my duration tools and all your tools come from the menu and whatever's clicked off, you will see all your tools here. Get that out of your way while you're working. So I have a, a quarter note, but I would like it to be a dotted quarter note. And then I'm going to hit my G, but I don't want it to be dotted. I'm going to change it to an eighth. And then I want another G. I'm using my keys and I can make it a dotted quarter note. And then another G is an eighth note. And then this is the four chord, which is F, A, and C. So the bottom letter is an F. So now I'm going to type in an F. But I want it to be a dotted quarter note again. And by the way, this rhythm is what the electric guitar would probably usually use. Another F, but I want it to be an eighth note. So I'm up here changing it. And then another F on the keyboard I'm hitting. And I'd like that to be the dotted quarter note and then another F that's an eighth note that will be fine it figured out I only had a half beat left and then this um, is the four chord again so it still has an F so I'm going to hit F again nice and simple you just use the bottom note of the chord 
change that to an eighth note. And kind of tricky here because I went up to the five chord, which is G, B, and D. So now I have to type in a G. And one more dotted quarter note. And then one more G that's an eighth note. And I'm back down to the one chord, C. All right, so... Oh, I think I might play around with this a little and put a dotted quarter note... C, eighth note, but this time I want it. I want it to end down here. How's that? And on a half note. Those are both C's, but I played around with the rhythm and the octaves a little. Let's listen to this now. So that's it. You can add whatever bass part in you would like. The rule is whatever bottom letter you have on your triad above, use that letter in the bass line. And don't worry about being perfect. Just give this a try. Guys, I hope you're hanging in there. This is tough. And I hope that you're learning and not feeling frustrated. And feel free to email me if you are um, in need of any questions answered and stuff and in the meantime don't be perfectionists just try these things the more that you play with these tools and test out things the more you'll be able to create with them and for right now we're slowly building a song and we'll do a couple more tricks with this later on but let's get those bass lines in using the bottom note of whatever your chord has in the bass choose trombones tubas double bass electric bass whatever you would like Take care, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Bye.